In today's video, we reflect on the evolution of the Flipper Zero, and I'm proud to say that Ace was among the first to bring you an in-depth review of the device. And now, years later, I'm revisiting its journey. As Plato famously stated, necessity is the mother of invention. This perfectly encapsulates the Flipper Zero, a device born from a Kickstarter project that has since cultivated a community not only eager to understand, explore and unlock the potential for the digital realm, but to also think outside the box. Today's a long one, so buckle up, turn up those speakers and let's, let's go. go. Introduction. The Flipper Zero dropped in 2020 and I recall my first encounter with it on a Reddit thread. I could see it as a canvas of potential, much like the Socratic vision of the unexamined life. We as a community took on the role of Socrates, questioning, probing and seeking the essence of what the Flipper Zero could become. Each firmware update, each new feature reflected our collective inquiry shaping this tool into more than just a gadget but a testament to our curiosity and the willingness to know nfc and rfid now the belts and braces of this device is its ability to interact with nfc and rfid it serves as a powerful tool for interacting with a wide range of wireless communication systems the flipper zero's utilization of the nxp pn series transcends basic tag interaction. This delves into modulation techniques, understanding that NFC, ISO, IEC layer of communication and exploiting weaknesses in classical cards like the PAX, the MyFair and Crypto One encryption. At a basic level, you can clone certain RFID tags by reading their data and emulating it. However, at a more advanced level of tinkering, the device can be used to analyze the security of RFID systems. This can be done by examining the communication between the tag and the reader. Flipper Zero can help identify potential security weaknesses such as unencrypted data transmission or default factory settings in tags that haven't been properly secured. Similar to RFID, Flipper Zero can manipulate the UID of NFC tags where applicable. This is especially relevant in scenarios where NFC tags or data are used for identification or access control and can demonstrate the importance of robust security measures in NFC implementations. Also, depending on the security tag, the Flipper Zero can clone NFC tags. This feature is significant for understanding the vulnerabilities and security aspects of different NFC tag types. There's also the caveat of card skimming now, the Flipper Zero itself is not a card skimming device, but it can interface with certain bank cards and transmissions, picking up certain information. It can't decipher the CVV number on the back of the card or any other data. It can, I have seen in instances, pick up the entire bank card and even some name and date information on an initial skim. Sub gigahertz communication. Now, I've gone into much depth into the sub gigahertz domain and if you haven't seen my video on this already check it out but the flipper zero serves as a dual role in both a spectrum analyzer and a signal manipulator this functionality allows for in-depth exploration and analysis of various signals within the one gigahertz frequency range a prime example of its capability can be illustrated through the dissection of the 433 MHz signal, which is commonly used in many wireless communication devices such as remote controls or Internet of Things devices. The device enables us to delve into the intricacies of pulse position modulation or PPM, a method where the position of the pulse within a time frame conveys data. Now, by analyzing such signals, we can understand how data is encoded and transmitted in these systems. Furthermore, the Flipper Zero can scrutinize the finer details of signal timing and frequency shift, which is the FSK, of course, which is another method of digital signal modulation. The FSK involves changing the frequency 
of a carrier signal to represent data and understanding this is crucial for anyone who's delving into wireless communication. One of the critical applications of the Flipper Zero in this spectrum is demonstrating and analyzing signal replay attacks. Now by capturing a signal, the device can replay and mimic the original transmitter. This capability not only showcases the practical aspects of the signal manipulation, but also serves as a powerful demonstration of the vulnerabilities present in wireless communication systems that lack robust encryption or frequency hopping mechanisms. Frequency hopping now is the method used to enhance the security and reliability of wireless communication by rapidly changing the carrier frequency, thereby making it more challenging for unauthorized interception or interference. Now overall, the Flipper Zero's functionality in the sub gigahertz spectrum not only provides a practical tool for signal analysis and manipulation, but also highlights the importance of implementing advanced security measures like robust encryption and frequency hopping in wireless communication systems to protect against vulnerabilities such as replay attacks. Custom firmware. Now the custom firmware has been a significant milestone in the Flipper community. For me, the customization aspect enhances the capability of the Flipper Zero, elevating it and its potential to greater heights. Among the top tier custom firmware options are Unleashed, Extreme and Rogue Master at this point in time. These firmware variants are not mere updates, they fundamentally transform the way the Flipper Zero functions, looks and how you interact with it. One of the key enhancements provided by these custom firmware versions is the implementation of advanced version controls with some being stable, unstable and development. Furthermore, using custom firmware variants can come equipped with different interfaces as mentioned. These interfaces greatly change the user experience providing access to a plethora of advanced features. For instance, users can effortlessly toggle between USB and Bluetooth modes, manage settings for sub gigahertz communication and external modules. You can utilize a variety of animation and animation packs, safe and non-safe for work ones. These enhancements not only boost the functionality of the Flipper Zero, but also make it a more adaptable and user-friendly experience, in my opinion. Now, I'm curious to know which firmware are HT members using right now and why? Leave a comment below let me know. Animation. Now, Norman McLaren astutely observed animation is not the art of drawing that move, but the art of movement that are drawn. This insight resonates profoundly when we consider animation in the context of a compact device like the Flipper Zero. Here, animation transcends aesthetic purpose serving as an entry point into a technical intricacies of bitmap rendering and frame buffering. Now, I've created a detailed video and it was one of my first animations that I did make on the Flipper Zero showcasing what you could do as your own animation artist. Additionally, there are numerous asset packs available compiled by talented community members, of course. You can find these resources through the link in the description below. However, I strongly encourage you to get your hands dirty and try making your own animation, even just following my video. Engaging in this process is valuable, not only to see what on the hood, but venturing into the field of graphical programming. Its practicality is quite insightful, I found, which within the scope of embedded systems, you're dealing with limited resources. Crafting animations in such environments not only hones your technical skills, but it deepens your understanding of efficient memory and resource utilization. This experience I found indispensable for anyone who's looking to master the art of digital graphics, especially in constrained computing environments, definitely give it a go. Bad USB. Now again, I was one of the first to do an in-depth video on this aspect of the Flipper Zero and the bad USB app and scripts for the Flipper Zero environments provide a revealing look 
into the vulnerabilities associated with human interface devices or HIDs. These scripts exemplify how seemingly benign devices can be utilized to exploit systems. By employing advanced scripts through the Flipper Zero, users can execute system level commands and engage in activities such as exploiting Windows management instrumentation, which is the WMI, you could covertly extract data, spin up a reverse shell, the list goes on. The use of the bad USB scripts on the Flipper Zero demonstrates the ease of which the USB device, often considered harmless, can be turned into a tool for significant system exploitation. This practice serves as a practical lesson in cybersecurity in my perspective, particularly in understanding risks associated with device permissions. As a sysadmin, Locking down the system is paramount and knowing what's coming in and out of it is even more. It highlights how device permission, often granted without a second thought, can be weaponized in social engineering attacks. Now such activities underscore the importance of strict device management policies and heightened awareness of potential security breaches through peripheral devices. The Flipper Zero, used in this context, becomes a valuable education tool in ethical hacking and cybersecurity training. It allows users to understand firsthand the intricacies of HID vulnerabilities and the need for comprehensive system measures to protect against such exploits. Wi-Fi hacking. Now, one of the big developments early on was the Wi-Fi development board, um, which was preloaded with black magic originally, but the community got on board with this and made very, very big leaps and bounds, I feel, especially in this external peripheral area of the board. Now, the Wi-Fi hacking with the Flipper Zero delves deep into the technical aspects of the wireless protocols, far beyond basic execution of scripts. This process involves advanced packet analysis which is crucial for comprehensive understanding of that 80211 wi-fi protocols check my other videos if you want to dive deeper into that for such sophisticated analysis the flipper zero can be augmented in some way either using the official wi-fi development board or one of the esp32 variation chips now it's important to note that the native capabilities of the Flipper Zero in its Wi-Fi hacking are primarily limited to the 2.4 GHz band. This limitation is due to the specification of the hardware on the board, particularly when relying solely on built-in features. However, when enhanced with the ESP32 baseboard, its capabilities are significantly expanded. And when these new sets of boards come out eventually, the 5 GHz band will be up for questioning as well. A primary example of such enhancements in the integration of the ESP32 is of course the Marauder firmware. The ESP32 Marauder is a comprehensive suite of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth offensive and defensive tools initially inspired by Space Hans uh, DOF project originally you should definitely check that out. Now this suite transforms the device into a portable and powerful tool for testing and, and analyzing Wi-Fi and Bluetooth networks. However, it's crucial to approach the use of the Marauder firmware with caution and it's clear to understand the legal boundaries here. Some capabilities of the firmware such as deauth attacks, rip rolling, packet sniffing may require explicit consent from the network owner to launch such an attack unauthorized use of these features would be deemed unlawful in most jurisdictions i would feel now the marauder project is maintained by the og himself just call me coco who develops boards and the firmware himself it's a testament to the possibilities of open source collaboration and in the enhancements that the flipper zero and the community are making apple ble now, the Apple BLE attack is probably the new kid on the block in terms of what's been significant this year, at least in 2023 for the Flipper Zero. In our exploration of the Apple BLE on Flipper Zero, my last video, we dived quite deeply into the Bluetooth low energy protocol. Now, this exploration involves the dissection of the GAT, which was the 
generic attribute profile, which is fundamentally how BLE communicates uh, by manipulating the GAT characteristics and understanding the services to discover the processes we gain insight into BLE devices like fitness tracking, smart watches, and smartphone and other device interactions. Now, practical application of understanding its emulation was the iBeacons, which is a technology primarily used by Apple. Now, iBeacon utilizes BLE for proximity-based services, enabling devices to perform certain actions when in pro physical proximity of an iBeacon. This can range from location-based advertisement to automation check-ins. This kind of exploration not only highlights the capability of BLE in creating proximity-based interactions, but also sheds light on potential vulnerabilities in BLE implementation. I think this was an oversight, especially from Apple's perspective when the ISO BLE crash application was discovered and was unpatched for some time. Now, interestingly, similar to technology to Apple's proximity pairing is also used in Windows and Android systems known as Swift Pair or Google Fast Pair systems retrospectively. These services operate on the same principle. When a BLE device like headphones is ready to pair and in close proximity, it broadcasts advertisement beacons. These beacons signals nearby devices of their presence and their readiness to pair. So it's, it's open in itself. However, these broadcasting beacons can be intercepted and replayed by another BLE device, potentially enabling one to spoof the device or even broadcast custom messages. This capability opens again a range of possibilities, including local spammings for ISO, Android, Windows, simultaneously using the Flipper Zero, as we could see. It's important to note that this is a local attack and it's based on tests that I've made and it's still, as I'm aware, a vulnerability. This exploitation with the Flipper Zero not only demonstrates the device's versatility in interacting with different operating systems via BLE, but also underscores the importance of understanding and securing wireless communication protocols. It highlights the need for vigilance in BLE implementation and the potential for misuse if these protocols are not adequately secured. As always, such exploration should be conducted ethically and in compliance with legal standards respecting the privacy and security of users. Now, the caveat here is that launching some of these attacks can also be detrimental to people who are dependent on applications that interact with their health, such as heart monitoring applications, blood pressure monitoring applications, and so much more. So definitely be cautious when using the BLE attack, Evil Portal. Next, we have the Evil Portal. Now, creating the Evil Portal on the Flipper Zero has never been easier, thanks to the hard work of devs like Big Bro Dude. When I first did it, it was definitely a longer process, but make sure you check that video out. It's one of the first to cover this as well. Now, his project turns the Wi-Fi development board into an open access point. When unsuspected users attempt to connect to this access point, they are presented with a, let's say, counterfeit login screen. Now, any credentials entered into this fake page are then transmitted to the Flipper Zero and logged into the SD card. This aspect of the evil portal highlights the ease with which users can be deceived into providing sensitive information under the guise of a legitimate network connection. Now, there are some caveats here. You would first need to log in to this SSID that the Flipper Zero spawns this access point. You would need to understand that it's not a secure connection when you do access the landing page. There is no pass through, meaning no internet is provided after the credentials are passed in. And if you had any wits about you, you could see regardless of how good the landing page is, that it is in fact just a static HTML CSS page. Nevertheless, this exploration not only demonstrates the Flipper Zero's capability in sophisticated network manipulation, but also serves as a practical lesson in understanding the vulnerabilities presented in wireless networks. 
Now it underscores the necessity of robust security protocols and highlights the awareness of cyber threats, particularly sophisticated attacks like this one, which would be a man in the middle, I suppose. However, it's crucial to emphasize that creation of and deployment of evil portals should always be conducted within the boundaries of ethical hacking and legal compliance. Again, GPIO and custom boards. Now the GPIO or general purpose input output segment of our exploration of Flipper Zero is where we delve into the realm of direct hardware interactions by interfacing with microcontrollers and hardware layers. This involves engaging with the essential components and protocols that facilitate communication between Flipper Zero and all the various external devices you can think of. There's too many to name at this point because once it starts putting into boards and external devices, the spectrum of possibility is so huge. Just know that there's going to be more in 2024 for sure. And to keep an eye on especially the GPIO and board aspects of the Flipper Zero. Now, speaking of external devices and boards, if you haven't already seen, you should definitely check out the boy AWOX and his board collection. Now, his custom dual ESP32 Wi-Fi board is a great addition to any Flipper owner, I would say. And its setup exemplifies high-level network testing. Now, if you smash this together with Marada, you've got quite a nice tool to add on to any New Year wish list if you were lucky enough to get one for Christmas. He should be restocking soon, so definitely join the Discord and keep updated on that. News and YouTube. Now the flipper again has been in the news as another hot topic. Again, it's mostly in the skid sphere with kids either bringing it into school and terrorizing their classmates. This coverage brings to light crucial discussion about security practice and the necessity for heightened public awareness in a digital age. Now on the YouTube front, the device caught attention of much bigger channels like Linus Tech Tips and David Bomble. This is great for the device as it gives it such a vast audience and gives people the chance to learn not only what the device can do but basic concepts of ethical hacking and on a larger front a deeper analysis of how to use it on a professional and educational level. Conclusion That was the Flipper Zero from start to 2023. It's clear the device is more than just a tool, it's a easy and fun path for beginners and experts alike in the realm of cybersecurity, ethical hacking and digital education. The Flipper Zero's versatility ranging from RFID to NFC interactions to sophisticated Wi-Fi hacking showcases its technical prowess as a device and an all-rounder. Its role in educating users about digital security intricacies is invaluable, especially in an era where understanding digital vulnerabilities is crucial, especially for the younger generation. The widespread attention it has received both in the news, positive and negative, and from YouTubers has significantly raised its public awareness and public profile. I can't forget to shout out at this point the OG Uber Z for his invaluable help and support not only to the HT channel but the Flipper community as a whole. This is also a great segue and point to address some of the community concerns surrounding individuals, especially in a TikTok realm trying to profit from the hard work of creative and community members. Let this serve as a warning such actions are not only unethical but undermine the very ethos of community. We are vigilant and we see everything and we will call cap where we see it. That concludes our technical odyssey with the Flipper Zero. This year we've not just used tools, we've understood them, dissected their workings and pushed their boundaries in the ethical realm. I hope this deep dive enriches your knowledge and ignites your passion for cybersecurity. Remember to support and subscribe to the channel as this helps HT and the Ace. Thanks again for joining me for this incredible journey and many more to come. Until next time, keep hacking, keep learning and stay safe in the cyberspace. Peace out.